my audible good morning ma'am is the slide visible to you all good morning ma'am yes so before starting today's experiment first of all i want to know are there any doubts from the previous experiments in fact both the experiments you can ask any questions if you have in your mind from the last two experiments the results of which you have already reported in your um, practical file that you have submitted till i can see that some students have not submitted the work what is the reason behind that If you not do your work on time, you will be losing marks. In your class assessment, yes. Are there any questions? no questions okay by the time uh, the other students are joining in still i can see only 23 attendees in the meeting um tell me about the principle on which the balance works the name of the principle and the statement come on answer nobody knows the principle on which the analytical balance works if you will remain silent i'm not going to i'm not going to give you the answer it is you who has to answer and all these questions will be asked in the viva so oh, i don't think your preparation level is really good what is the least count of the balance i'm 0.2 mg 0.2 mg is there any formula to calculate it Ma'am, weight of rider upon number of divisions on the rider scale. Number of divisions. Uh, how many types of divisions are there on the rider scale? Is it only one? I guess yes. No, you guess. I've shown you the impact, the balance, the scale, uh, in enlargement impact. there are two types of division the bigger division and the smaller division so which divisions are you talking about do you remember the scale no uh, actually i didn't attend the previous class you didn't attend 
the previous um, class. Remember, and uh, see, I think for calculating least count, we have to take the smallest one. That is another part. So, how do you know the answer? Like you've taken the notes, or you have learned the working of the balance in your uh, uh, junior level classes, junior level, maybe in eleven, twelve. No, ma'am. In the first class, you taught. So you remember it from the first class. Yes. It has to be the smaller divisions. Total number of smaller divisions on one side of the rider scale, which comes out to be uh, fifty. As you have seen, uh, between two bigger divisions on the scale, there were four smaller divisions. Four smaller divisions. That means uh, five parts. Now, if I make these divisions smaller divisions, nine. How do you think the least count will vary? If I increase the number of divisions. Between two bigger divisions on the rider scale, such that the number of parts become ten. Ten parts between two big divisions. What will happen to the discount of the balance? Ma'am, it will decrease. Because number of smaller divisions will increase, so least count will decrease. So, give the answer quantitatively. Why are you giving the answer qualitatively? You can in fact calculate how much it will become. Zero point one milligram. Zero point one milligram. Yes, that is the right answer. So, the least count definitely is not fixed. It will depend upon the uh, instrument. Or the balance specifically on which you are working. So, if the number of divisions will vary, definitely the discount will vary. Uh, can there be any other way of for changing the discount of the balance? By changing the mass of rider. By changing the. My mass of rider. Mass of rider. Yes, that is because. Because in the formula we have only two quantities, so definitely to change the mass of the rider, then too we can change the least count of the analytical balance. While uh, weighing a specific quantity of a salt, uh, why do we need to take the third reading? Means after transference of the salt into the volumetric flask. Why do we need to take the third reading after the transference? In fact, one of the students answered this in the class when I was actually uh, teaching you about this. Salt में stick कर जाते हैं मैम उसको measure करने के लिए कितना stick कर गया? Yes, because all the salt particles they are not transferred. Some particles stick to the walls of the weighing tube. Remember the terms as well, because sometimes you know the answer, but these terms do not come to your mind, and that is where you lose marks in the diagram. Especially again, uh, how do you add uh, the deionized water to the volumetric flask with the help of uh, which apparatus? Wash bottle. Wash bottle. Mostly students actually forget the name of this specific. Uh, apparatus and they say it is a plastic bottle. This, that, many names they take, but the term wash bottle doesn't come to their mind. So always remember the uh, name of that plastic bottle. And yes, with this, another question has come to uh, into my mind. I have asked you to find out the difference between distilled water and deionized water. What is the difference between distilled yes. water and deionized water? Ma'am, ma'am, distilled water is obtained by like evaporating mm, the water and then cooling it and then uh, thereby getting the pure water but 
Same by distillation. Of, uh, by distillation, in fact, this is a distillation process. But you are not actually giving the answers correctly. No, you are evaporating water. Then you are condensing what? And the water vapors. You know the water vapors. You did not take this term while you were answering. Very, be very specific and clear about what you are saying in your answers. Okay, so go again. Uh, what is distilled water? Ma'am, uh, distilled water is the water obtained by first evaporating the impure water and then cooling the pure water vapors. So uh, the water obtained by that process is called distilled water. But in case of a deionized water, the water is free from any ions. But like it is done with the help of electrolysis or something like that. It is done with the help of electrolysis. Yes, ma'am. We deionize it. Have you read it that anywhere? Not... Have you read that anywhere? Yes, ma'am. On Google, I think. As to, uh, that day on. What day, is the status in your water chemistry class? Uh, how many lectures have taken place after I left? Ma'am, by R T. R T, ma'am, has taken how many lectures till now? Ma'am, I guess three, three or so. Ayush, why are you every time using this term? I guess, I guess, you guess, you guess that. Actually, when you use these terms while you are communicating, this shows your uh, lack of confidence. And I don't think, at least uh, by counting the number of lectures, you are less confident. Is it? If you are attending the classes, definitely you should be confident about what you are saying. In fact, I checked one of the students uh, in the last viva as well. When you people use these terms, this signifies that you are not confident about your answer. So how many lectures? One lecture. She must have taught you about uh, the boiler troubles. In that, only boiler troubles has been taught. After that, will come. Uh, Ma'am, on lime the, soda. Lime and soda. She has taught. Yes. yes. That means she has started with the conditioning. Internal conditioning, external treatment methods. Okay, two lectures have taken place. That means last one is left. So, lime soda she has taught. What about uh, uh, ion exchange method? Because in the external treatment methods, you have to study about three: lime and soda, then it is the um, light method, and finally the ion exchange. I think she must have not been able to cover it. That will take place probably in the next lecture. Ion exchange has she taught you? No, ma'am. No. Okay. So when you will study about the ion exchange method, there you will be able to find out exactly uh, what happens, like how deionized water is prepared. So water free from any type of ions, definitely that is deionized water, free from any type of ions. And there, what happens? Big columns using resins. Uh, big columns are used for the preparation of uh, deionized water, and these columns contain resins, which actually remove the ions from the uh, water that is fed into it. She will explain that to you in detail. So that was fine as far as uh, deionized and distilled water is concerned. Okay, now I can see after 14 minutes, I can see the number of attendees has reached 49. You people are so lazy in the morning, you don't join the class in time. Okay, so with that, we can start today's experiment. Uh, there is nothing much to be taught today regarding the experiment because as you can see, the objective is the same. You have to find out the alkalinity of the supplied water samples. Now, the only change that has occurred is that in the second experiment, um, you were supplied only one sample, and in experiment number three, uh, there will be two samples. One well, will be supplied in a plastic bottle, and the other sample will be supplied in a glass bottle. So, this is how you differentiate between the two samples on the basis on which the uh, in which bottle the sample is supplied. Otherwise, as regards or as far as the 
principle of the experiment is concerned, it is the same. The objective actually uh, behind designing experiment number three is to make you familiar with all types of alkalinity practically. Because um, as far as the numericals are concerned, you must be coming across all the five types of uh, conditions which you have learned in the table, isn't it? When P is equals to zero, when P is equals to M, when P is equals to half M, P is less than half M, P is greater than half M. So these five conditions you have learned in the table and you even have to solve numerical problems based on all five types uh, in your tutorial class. But the second experiment, in fact, in alkanity has been designed to just make you familiar with uh, how practically the conditions will vary, which in fact we have discussed in detail in the classroom. So, today I don't have much to explain. I will be only supplying the data to you and you will be completing the experiment. So, theory I have explained you uh, uh, already. In fact, twice, once I have taken it in the class and second time in the last experiment. So, you know the reactions the neutralization reactions of the hydroxide carbonate and bicarbonate ions. Even the procedure is the same. Firstly, you will be standardizing the acid solution that has been provided to you and that you will do with the help of weighing exactly uh, 0.265 gram of sodium carbonate that approximately and then Preparing a standard solution from it using deionized water in a volumetric or uh, in a measuring glass. In fact, it is not a volumetric glass, it is a measuring glass. You even call that volumetric glass. That is not a problem. So, I will not be going into the details of all these steps because I have explained this to you in detail on the last turn. Once the standardization of acid is done, after that, you go for the titration of the unknown water sample. And since in this experiment, uh, you will be supplied two water samples, that means the second step has to be repeated. So, as I was saying, is slide number five visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. So this second step has to be repeated. Once it has to be done with the um, glass water sample and the second time it has to be done in a plastic bottle sample. And you will record the two readings that you will obtain in tables 2 and 3. I will be showing you two tables. Uh, yes, since I am going through this, tell me what is the meaning of the term concordant observations? What does the term concordant mean? Two same readings. That is not the complete answer. Yes? Simultaneously? Same reading. Exactly same reading. Yes, simultaneously exactly same readings are called concordant observations. So from here the observation part starts. You can note down in fact these values. So first it has to be the weight of empty paint tube, then the weight of the tube with sodium carbonate crystals, then after transference the weight and finally the weight that you have transferred to the volumetric or measuring glass. In order to weigh 0.2642, what denomination of weights will be used? Or let us not take this one right this time. Let us take this one. In order to weigh 4.0732 gram, 
what denominations of weight you need to take from the weight box type the answer in the chat box Is the question clear to everyone? Ayush has answered first. Weights of 2 gram, 2 gram, 50 mg, 20 mg, and writer at 16 units. Yes, Ayush, that is the correct answer. How many else have written the same answer in their uh, copies? With whatever you are sitting with. Please raise your hand. I can see no hands raised. The rest of them are sleeping or they are just present in the meeting and not listening to what I am saying. One more, one hand only, go over the other. The rest of you are sleeping. Two hands. Okay, Akash. Swatik Satyam Havaz Ashish Anuj Satyam Bhumika Ayan Shivam Means I need to charge you again and again, otherwise, you people are sitting idly. Even after saying so much, I can see only 11 hands right now. I know how to charge you up. Today I will not be giving you enough time. Not beyond 12 o'clock. You will submit the assignment by 12 o'clock today. Within the class duration time. People keep sleeping in the class. Okay, so I hope you all have noted down these readings on slide number six. Is it? Should I move further? Say yes or no at least. Yes, ma'am. So this is table number one. Titration value for the standardization of asset solutions. 
the ideally speaking um, according to concordant readings in the first go uh, it is really difficult if somebody is really very um, good with the experimental skills his experimental hand is really good then to you should be requiring at least three readings before you record that concordant one because what is done um, the first experiment that you carry out that is a rough rough estimation to actually where the end point is lying you do it quickly means the acid you add it to the contents of the conical flask quickly in the first go so that you get an idea between which two mls is the end point lying you are adding it very quickly and as soon as you get the end point you stop adding the acid from the uh, urate into the conical flask suppose the value lies between 17 and 18 now you have an idea or you have reached 17.9 now what will happen when you will carry out the experiment the second time you will allow the acid to flow very quickly say till 16 or 16.5 units and then you become really slow after 16.5 you add a drop and then you shake the contents and see whether that end point has come or not then you add another drop you open the cork of the urate another drop and then you shake the contents and you see because you have to record the last drop of the acid that will be added to the contents of the conical flask to observe that color change are you following what i'm trying to say means in fact if even if you are very good uh, at your experimental skills then at least also you should be um, requiring three observations to get that concordance right now i'm giving you the theoretical results so it hardly matters but i'm talking about a situation when you will be performing the experiment have you followed what i'm trying to say or not yes ma'am yes means the first the first time you perform the experiment you do it really quickly means you are adding the acid from the burette and you are rotating uh, shaking the contents simultaneously and you are seeing whether the color is changing or not whether the color is changing or not and as soon as the color changes you stop that will just give you an idea where the end point is lying and after that you become very um, precise when you reach near to that end point initially you can add acid uh, continuously but after that you add it drop wise so that you can find out what is the last drop that will bring about the color change and then for that concordant value you need to repeat the second experiment with the same precision if you have got 17.7 say in the second time it should be 17.7 in the third go as well then only you can call it as the concordant reading and the particular about ml and as you can see i have also modified the table a bit the one that you can find in your lab manual it is not the same table so be particular about that you draw this table in your practical file have you noted down the readings here of table 1 in fact and draw the whole table in your copies should i move further yes ma'am okay now coming to table 2 so as you can see in fact it is the same table that you have seen on the last turn as well but here you will be drawing two tables one for the sample in the glass bottle and one for the sample in the plastic bottle and as you can see even the readings are varying note down the table and the values that have been provided data and from the data here the final concordant titer value for p and m uh tell me which type of alkalinity is it
which type is it hydroxide and, hydroxide and carbonate yes it is hydroxide and carbonate Please note down the complete table. So this experiment is being repeated only to make you familiar with the various types of alkalinity that you can come across. The last one that we did was when um, P was zero. So when P was zero, that means Hydroxide and carbonate were absent, and it was only bicarbonate alkalinity that was present. Here, the type is varying. That means, in this experiment, you will be observing both the color changes. Firstly, uh, the color change from pink to colorless, and secondly, from uh, yellow to red. Last time you got no pink color with phenolphthalein. Have you noted down the observations? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Now coming to table number three. Again, it is the same table, but uh, the data that is there it is different. And from and don't forget to write in plastic bottle and in glass bottle. That is what is differentiating. And do not even uh, mix up the results because suppose you do it correctly and you don't report it correctly in the final results, then also you will lose marks. So be very particular about which bottle uh, you are working with. And you are reporting the correct result for that specific bottle. Now tell me on the basis of this, these final values, what is going to be the type of alkalinity that will be present? Carbonate and bicarbonate. Yes, carbonate and bicarbonate. P is less than half time. Should I move to the next slide? Yes. Now finally coming to the calculation part. Did you people try to derive uh, how this final expression for N1 has come? From where this 4 term has come, from where this 53 term has come? Did you derive it? Because, because uh, the calculation of the second step that has been taken up in the class, I have explained that in detail to you. That. But as far as this standardization of acid step is concerned, this was not taken in the class. Who will tell me how this has come? Ma'am, 4 denotes oh. ma'am uh, 200 ml of 250 ml of water, which was initially taken. 
okay 250 ml of uh, volumetric flask was used so how has that converted into four ma'am uh, converted into liters so when that was converted into liters one by 4 upon 1000 yes so that will convert into one by four and that four has gone into the denominator a numerator yes. M fifty three equivalent weight of uh, Na two CO three. Equivalent weight. Twenty five. Twenty five. So that is right. But tell me, but tell me the uh, the expression that I have high uh, that I have highlighted. How this expression has been formed? And then equivalence concept. Law of uh, chemical equivalence. So. What has been kept on the left hand side and what has been kept on the right hand side? Uh, no, no, equivalence no. of both. Then equivalence of uh, uh, water sample and uh, standard acid. It is not standard acid this time. You are standardizing the acid. It is the unknown acid, in fact. So on the left hand side you have gram equivalents, number of gram equivalents of the unknown acid. So you don't know the normality of the acid that is N one, and gram equivalence is what N one V one normality into volume. So this is the volume that you will record as the observation from table one. Yes. So this is the concordant value or the observation from table one. This side on the right hand side you will have number of gram equivalents of known water sample because you have prepared that sodium carbonate solution of known strength. So you know what is uh, the normality of the prepared water sample. And why is it twenty five over here? Because that much amount of water was pipetted out. Pipetted out, yes. So that is the volume of the pipet. Yes, that is the volume of the pipet. And here it is the normality of sodium carbonate solution that has been prepared. Normality. And I hope now you remember the formula of normality, everyone. This was taken up in the lecture class as well. Normality is. W divided by E into V, where V has to be in liters. W is the mass of sodium carbonate that you have obtained uh, from subtracting W three from W two. W is W three minus W two minus W three, and volume, as you have said, it is a Volumetric or measuring flask of 250 ml. So, in place of volume, you will write 250 upon 1000 for the conversion of uh, ml into liters. And 53 is the equivalent mass of sodium carbonate. So, when you will substitute these values with the normality uh, formula, you will get this term. And then you can calculate the normality in terms of W and V S. And once the normality of the acid has been calculated, you can substitute the terms in the uh, phenolphthalene endpoint expression and the methyl endpoint expression. So now I hope the calculation is clear to everyone. Why this fifty thousand term has to be multiplied every time? And fifty is the equivalent weight of calcium carbonate, and thousand to convert it into ppm. Thousand to convert into ppm. There was a unit of impact. Uh, Ma'am, fifty gram is the equivalent weight of CSO three. That gram yes, converted gram into milligram. Yes, gram converted. Yes, gram has been converted into milligram. Yes, that is the conversion. That is absolutely correct. So this table. 
in fact you know it already and even this you will be drawing again and finally you will report the results as you can see on slide number 12 so you will report the results independently for the glass water bottle and the plastic bottle sample so i hope the instructions for today's experiment are clear to everyone now as i was saying after this you have to report the experiment in your practical file and you have to submit it till 12 you have around um, 2 hours 15 minutes left with you so please complete this experiment you do not need to write the theory again is it clear the theory you've already written on the last term principle and theory can be avoided straight away report the objective and after that the observations calculation and result is it clear Yes, ma'am. So, are there any questions yes. from today's experiment? If no, then I allow you to leave the class. Please start writing the experiment in your practical file. I will be sharing a link with you. Uh, to upload your assignment for today by 12 o'clock. Twelve o'clock man, noon. What? Nothing I've got it. <laughs>